Hey guys, thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics. I'm Ben Sullins, and today what we're gonna talk about is how I decided to get solar. The process I went through, the website I used, and I'll even have a special link for you where you can get direct support from them just by being a part of the community here, and the data that they show you and how to analyze that data. Also, as a little cherry on top, I'm gonna add how I, and you potentially as well, could get a Tesla Powerwall for almost free. Not lying about that, I'll show you. It's a legit program here, but it's only for California residents. So stay tuned for that. And if you're new to the family here, I'd love for you to join us. Each week, what I do is I take a look at something Tesla related and I find the data behind it and try to analyze that. And I do that because I wanna be objective and I hope you do too. Plus it's a lot of fun. We get to see what the facts show, not what the pundits or speculation or appearances may seem that you find on a lot of the other news sites or channels like that. So we really try to see what's what and, and and break down the data to understand what's really going on. So every week we post a new video uh, along with other things like reviews of Tesla products and all Tesla related stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing, I'd love for you to join us each week here on the channel. And as always, I have a summary of this show down below in the description as well as links to all the stuff I show you and any special deals that we have going on with other companies that will help actually support the channel. So uh, check it out and let's dive into the data now about how to get solar and how to really think about that in this new world that we live in. So the first thing is maybe the background here, and you probably found me through a video that I did where my wife asked me how much money we were saving on our Tesla that we bought uh, just over a year ago, and it turned out not actually a lot. We were saving about 40%, which is a high percentage, but I don't drive a lot, and so we're saving about 30 bucks a month in gas or compared to what we would spend on gas. Um, but then I started to think, okay, we're gonna get a second EV. We have a reservation for a Model 3, and that's gonna up our bill. We're paying about 60 bucks a month right now for fuel costs for our Tesla, and that's gonna go up a little bit, not, a, not exactly double, but maybe 50% more when we have two EVs in the house. So I started to think, how could we really get the most efficient way to power our stuff for the lowest amount of money and i live in california where energy prices are quite high there's no coal in our grid here in san diego so the actual kilowatt hour rates are, are pretty high and as i dug into this i decided that solar was really something worth exploring especially since my monthly bill was over 200 dollars a month now after i got my tesla so i have some friends in the solar industry that actually recommended a site and i'll show you that in a second where you can submit your bill and actually actually what your house looks like. You can do a little Google Maps pan, even a shot of your roof. And with that, what you can do is get quotes from them without giving them your phone number. That's important because a lot of sites where you do this, you give them your info and they just bombard you with sales calls. And that sucks, especially if you don't have a really nice objective way to compare it. And the site I'm gonna show you here actually does that. So we'll take a look at that one second, but first, Let's think about what are the key terms. This was something as I got into it, I didn't really know a whole lot about how solar works or what the different parts of the system are and all that. So I wanted to just talk about those briefly and give you some really basic insight into the terminology and the things you should be looking for if you talk to a solar company that is gonna give you a quote. The first thing I wanna talk about are just the parts of the system itself. And I have a good infographic here that explains this from my friends at Solar to the People. And the first thing are the panels. Now. These are obvious, they are the big photovoltaic panels that sit on your roof. Now, Tesla also has a solar roof and that's coming out where it's actually embedded in the tiles, but I've found out that's actually not a new technology, it's just a new design sort of that they're using. And that promises to be pretty cheap, but I'm actually hearing a lot that we're not sure quite how much power it would produce. So it may not be that great of an option if you wanna generate a ton of power with solar. So the second piece Piece of equipment that you will have to think about when you get a solar installation is the inverter. So the energy coming out of the panels themselves is DC. It's a direct current. And this isn't what most homes run on. I don't think any homes actually do. So you have to convert it over to AC, which is known as alternating current. And if you want to go back in time, this is about Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison and this whole big weird debate they had and all that. But anyways, long story short, you need to invert the power so that 
way you can use it in your home. And there's two kind of types. There's maybe three or more, but really when I was looking into it, there were only two things that were distinctions for me. The first one was a optimizer. And this is a singular unit that all of the panels run into and convert all of the energy for you to actually use. And that is nice because it's only one thing that can go wrong. Uh, if you have to replace it, which apparently inverters have to replace it quite often, their warranties are less and all that. But if you have to replace it, you only have one to deal with. On the flip side, the downside of an, an optimizer is that if it goes down, it's your whole system's offline. The entire uh, network of panels and everything else is offline. So at this point, you'll just be pulling energy from the grid, which is probably not what you wanna be doing. So there's that, that's the common way. And a lot of people are using that. A lot of installers, a lot of the quotes I got have that. The other one is kind of interesting. It's the micro inverters. And these are a bit different. And there's some things to consider here. They actually are attached to the panels or they're one per panel. And the deal is, is if one or two or even five of these go down, the rest of the system still continues to function. So think about the old Christmas lights where if one went out, they all went out. That's your optimizer, essentially. The new Christmas lights, the one where a bulb or two can burn out and it still works, that is like the micro. And the micro seems to be more popular with people that are kind of in the know here, just because inverters do go bad and rather than being completely down for however long it takes to get the new one installed, blah, 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 then you're just still online, you're just a little bit down, so it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now, if you're considering going off grid, and if you are, awesome for you, the actual amount of effort and energy it takes to do that, I found is tremendous, uh, then you're gonna want the micros because the other will, otherwise you have basically a one single point of failure for your entire power system. So be very careful when considering that. This is really important. All right, the next thing to know about is your electrical box in your home. So this is the breaker box that's maybe outside your house or in your garage or something. And this is where all the circuits are that flip on different different electrical lines in your house that power whatever, your lights, your dishwasher, your refrigerator, etc. Now this is important because if you have a smaller box, like I have a 100 amp box, it's not enough to actually power or to handle the solar and to deal with all that. So you have to upgrade that. And in my quotes, it's about $1,300 to $1,500 here to upgrade from a 100 amp panel to a 200 or 225 amp panel. Now, when you do that, you're gonna get double the capacity. So if you have multiple EVs or wanna switch other things over to electric, you can do that without having to worry too much about overloading your breaker and actually flipping any of the circuits or anything like that. So those are the three main parts. There's also the monitoring system and the racking system, but I wouldn't worry too much about those. I didn't really see too many details or too many differences. However, I know someone out there will share whatever the really significant difference is there in the comments down below. Okay, so that's your solar system. The other thing to consider is about where you live and how good it is for solar. Some parts of the country, say Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, even California, we get a lot of sunshine, so we have a lot of opportunity. Now, the other side of that is that how much do you pay for electricity? So as I mentioned here in California, in Southern California, we don't have a ton of coal or any of those other really cheap energy sources on our grid, so the prices are quite high. I mean, we're looking at peak prices in San Diego of around 41 cents per kilowatt hour, and even super off-peak rates of 16 cents per kilowatt hour. That is way higher than most other places in the country. So if you're in somewhere like maybe Texas, where electricity is extremely cheap, or even Arizona or some of these other places that have a lot of sun but also have really cheap energy, it may not make financial sense for you. And as much as I would like to say, hey, let's just all you know do our best for the planet and all that, uh, I really understand that financial viability is also something you have to think about for your family. So this isn't just me trying to preach about solar and how good it is for the planet. It's about, does it actually make sense for you financially? Now for me, it clearly does because my bill is well over the price I would get for a loan. Now I won't get deep into the finances of that, but I did wanna talk about that for a second because it is important to think about this. Now, some other terminology to be familiar with, especially as you go down this, or even when you look at EVs and stuff, there is a kilowatt versus a kilowatt hour. 
and it's a little hard to conceptualize this. So I like to think of it basically as the kilowatt hour is the amount of energy you have. So my car, my Tesla Model 60 has a 60 kilowatt hour battery. That's like how much energy it can store. And then a kilowatt is the speed at which the energy can transfer. So if I'm charging at a supercharger, most times I'm gonna get somewhere between 60 kilowatts and 120 kilowatts. If I'm sharing that charging station with someone else, the max I'll get is 60 kilowatts. But if I'm there alone, I'll get 120 kilowatts. So these are the speed at which the energy is being transferred. If you think of this in terms of your car, the kilowatts are the speedometer that go up and down as you're actually driving. And the kilowatt hours would be how much gas is left in the tank, like how much more energy you have to actually go. And so that is important terminology to know when you're talking about this stuff, especially when you're looking at these rates, because you may look at how many kilowatt hours you used in a year, but your system won't be really rated that way. It'll be rated by how many kilowatts it produces. So that's important because the amount of kilowatts that it produces basically say how much energy is it going to actually absorb and then send into your system uh, as it's running versus how much power could it actually generate over the over a year, let's say, and how much does that compare against what you actually use? So now let's jump into the website, which is energysage.com, which is where you can submit your bid or what you're looking for and have installers submit their quotes all online and you can compare them side by side. So I'm gonna show you the quotes I received for my home and then we'll actually go in and I'll explain some of the terminology and what really made me decide to go with the installer I chose. So here in energysage.com, I have my marketplace as they call it. This is kind of my dashboard, which has all of the different quotes that I've received for my solar bid. And what I did to do that was uploaded my address. I put in my actual roof. It had a little Google Maps or Google Earth where I selected my roof. And from there, it they knew exactly my address. They knew how much energy I was using. And they knew what my roof line looked like to know if it faces east or west or north or south and how that may be affected with their system design. So on the comparison here, what you have on top are all the different vendors or all the different installers that have submitted quotes. You can see ratings and reviews about them. You can click on them, get more info and all that. The next thing is the equipment. And I was talking about this a little bit. So there's different types of panels and there's different types of panel ratings. So there's the standard panels and then there's the premium panels. These are the only ones I received. And these just speak to essentially the efficiency of the panels themselves and how much energy they can generate. Then you have the inverters. As I mentioned earlier, you have the optimizers and the micros. So the O would be the optimizers and then the M would be the micros. You can see that I only received one quote with the micros, but after talking to one of the other vendors here, I actually selected a system with micros, which didn't really change the cost overall. So the system design is where you get into how many panels and how much energy it's going to generate. And this is where the difference between kilowatts and kilowatt hours matters. The one I actually went with was Solare Energy and there we actually upgraded it a little bit. So instead of 14 panels on the quote you see here, I have 16 and that generates 5.12 kilowatts of energy. So as it's generating, that is the amount of energy that will actually be streaming into my house. And over throughout the year, it's gonna be close to 8.4 kilowatt hours. So that's the amount of energy that I'll actually generate from solar over the year. Now this is gonna offset my bill by about 97%. It's almost completely offsetting my bill. In San Diego, we have a weird kind of system, which I don't think is gonna be that weird in the future, but it seems new and odd here, where just to be connected to the grid, you have to pay $10 a month, no matter what. Then for all of the energy I send back to the grid, I do get credits but those credits are taxed a little bit. There's a, I think a two cent tax per kilowatt hour that I send to the grid. And then I can buy that back later. This is where the Tesla Powerwall comes into play. And the Tesla Powerwall is something that can really help you here because it can basically offset the buying and selling of energy with their net energy metering system. So I don't wanna to get too far off topic, but it's basically a way to uh, buy low, so you refill your power wall at night when the rates are the lowest, and then you sell them the energy. You basically unload 40, 50, maybe 100% of your power wall as soon as you hit peak rates. So the peak rates are, in our case, at least double of the super off peak rates. So we're essentially buying low and selling high, which will just 
offset all the costs that we have in the winter months or if it's raining we don't have as much energy being produced so the system i ended up with was 16 panels and it generates 97 percent of the electricity i have for the whole year and it has a power wall but the power wall is almost free and i'll talk about that in a little bit now on energy sage here what you can see is that you have the gross system price then below that the price after rebates there aren't any rebates in this case. Then you have the federal incentive tax credit. That's what that ITC is. This is the 30% off that you get from the federal government. And then you might have local and state tax credits. Now, I'm gonna do another video on this, but know that in California, we have something called the SGIP, the SGIP, which is a program that gives you state rebates for self-generation of power. And one of the systems that they use or approve are the Tesla Powerwalls. So if you're in California, you can actually apply for a rebate to get a Powerwall. And that rebate, as you can see in this case, comes out to about 5,600 bucks, which is really close to almost the cost of the Powerwall. So it's not entirely free, but it's getting there and that's awesome. Having a Powerwall does let you offset that cost as I was mentioning, you know, buying low and selling high. So that's something really to consider if you are getting solar is to look at this rebate and to actually see if you can help offset all of your electricity cost using that program. So after we look at the federal ITC and the tax credits, you come down to probably the most important number, one of the most important numbers financially, and that is the price per watt. So the way Energy Sage does it, I'm not really a fan of. They take the gross system price and divide it by the system size in watts, but in my case here where you can see the gross system price is actually inflated because I'm getting a Tesla Powerwall. So that actually adds about 7,500 bucks to the gross system price. So where you see Solari Energy here coming in at 5.92, that's really not accurate. So if you wanna do the math yourself though, and this is what I recommend, is to actually take the net system price and then divide that by the system size in watts. This will be a better representation of what the actual price you're getting is. On the dashboard, they also have a really good thing here where they can see the first year and first month electricity cost. And then they try to compare it. So based on the system size, how much is the cost of solar gonna be versus how much is the cost of energy over a 20 year time span. And these again are a little bit off, but it's about as close as you can really do. And that's because the way that rates will change over time and all the other factors that you may have to replace an inverter or something like that, there's so many other variables here, but I think they do a tremendous job to try to compare. And as you can see, one of the challenges is that all of these systems still had some cost of utilities. None of them were exactly zero. And so with that in mind, one of the things that you have to think about is could I get a power wall and do this rate arbitrage thing where I buy low and sell high to offset the rest of that cost? I say yes, especially since there's a program that will make it nearly free. So I had a great experience with Energy Sage, and I would like to invite you to do so as well. If you use the link right here or the one down in the description, you'll actually be letting them know that you're a part of the community here and they're gonna help you out. So if you have, if you use that link to sign up and search for solar, again, you don't have to actually select it, but get quotes, don't be bothered by installers, compare all the details, all the stuff that I showed you that I went through. If you go through that and then you have any questions and you leave the comment down below with hashtag Energy Sage, they're gonna monitor this video and they'll actually help you figure it out. They'll answer your questions there. And that's only for our community here. So make sure that you use the special link they gave me as well as the link in the description. And full disclosure that if you do sign up through there, it does help out the channel a little bit. So I would really appreciate it and support this channel. There's no extra cost to you, anything else. Just letting them know that you're a part of the community and that we have a special deal with them where they're gonna help answer your questions and help support the channel if you end up do selecting solar there. So I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you back here next time.